want to fight your mom. Belinda Joyner was born in Garrisburg, a small town in North Carolina near the Virginia border. We're just here to try to help those who might be a little bit less fortunate than we are as far as having food. Most of the town's residents are Black, and nearly one in three people here live below the poverty line. Over the years, a lot of industries have set up shop in this community. In the area that we're in, we're right off I-95, as you can see. Yeah, I mean, there are trucks going by. So I'm calling it the dumping ground because it's easy. they say it's easy access. One of the big plants in town is the wood pellet plant. Mm -hmm. What impact do you think this plant is having on the community here? Well, if you went there, you saw the traffic going in and out. So now just picture if you live right there in that community, and this was 24-7, every day, all day long, all night long. The particulars that's in the air, one gentleman said that he doesn't cook out anymore because you can see the residue. The people that live here worked hard for what they have, and they don't have the luxury of getting up and moving because something comes in their community and disrupts their lives, and it's not fair. This facility is less than two miles from Joyner's home, and it's operated by a company called Inviva. Wood pellets are highly processed lumps of ground up wood that honestly look a lot like rabbit food. They're used as biofuel, so they're burned to create what's called biomass energy. The industry says burning wood pellets is a green alternative to fossil fuels, which is appealing to countries that are trying to reduce their emissions quickly. 97% of the nearly 7 million tons of U.S. wood pellet exports go to Europe. Production in the forest-rich American Southeast is also growing. The region currently has 24 wood pellet exporting plants, and 12 more have been proposed. The industry claims it's primarily using waste wood, or wood that can't be sold for other purposes. Watch out for thorns. Okay, and then we have tons of briars, so you're just gonna have to watch your head. We're almost there. All right. So, so what yeah. are we looking at here? Yeah, this, um, this previously was a bottomland hardwood forest, very typical of North Carolina forests. But three years ago, it was clear cut for wood pellet biomass energy. Rita Frost has been tracking the wood pellet industry for the Dogwood Alliance, a nonprofit working to protect forests in the American South. Why did you bring me here? So I brought you here today because I wanted you to see the leftovers. And we tracked in Viva to this site. We tracked logs going back to their facility from this site. Taking those forests away is directly threatening our climate, our environment, and our communities. Trees capture carbon from the atmosphere. When a tree is cut down and burned, that carbon is released, with one less tree to recapture it. And Viva says that they are managing forests responsibly. If they're replanting the trees, then same difference, right? Like mm -hmm. the carbon gets released, the carbon gets retracted. So when the wood pellet biomass industry claims that they're carbon neutral, they are relying on the assumption that trees will grow back. Well, first of all, I would love to point to this and say, well, this is case number one of thousands. Where are the trees growing back? Who has grown back this forest? The thing is, is that in Viva and wood pellet production companies are not managing forests. They are buying wood that comes from forests that is mostly from private landowners in the southern United States. They cannot tell that landowner what to do with their forest after they have logged it. You are waiting for those forests to regrow and restore the carbon that's been lost. However, scientists are telling us that it takes an average of 90 years for that carbon debt to be repaid. And when we need climate action in a decade, I don't think that we can be banking on 90 years. In fact, the science shows that burning wood pellets generally releases even more carbon than coal. Inviva declined our interview requests. Instead, they gave us a statement that said that they remain committed to fighting climate change and ensuring forest growth. They also claimed that hardwood trees, which capture more carbon, make up a small percentage of their wood, and that they're meeting or exceeding air quality standards. Lumberton is located on the other side of the state. It's also the proposed site of a new pellet facility, owned by the British company Active Energy Group. Donna Chavis is a member of the Lumbee tribe, the largest indigenous tribe in North Carolina. She's trying to stop the plant from operating in her town, which has already seen the effects of logging in the region. Seems like this area has been flooding. Yes. Right? Uh, am I right about that? Yes, absolutely. And it's sad because the, the river is such a sacred part of us, and yet it has become, I'd hate to use the word enemy, but that would be accurate to call it an enemy, an adversary. 
The town is still recovering from Hurricanes Matthew and Florence, which flooded Lumberton in 2016 and 2018, and caused a combined $21 billion in damage statewide. It's that history of flooding that makes the wood pellet industry particularly risky for towns like this one. So when we're seeing that cutting, you're seeing a loss of culture and also protection, which is a part of the natural world's role. And the way the trees were cut was developing like a tunnel effect so that when water got in that area, it became flooded. When you say that cutting down trees will make flooding worse, what do you mean by that? How, how is that possible? The roots of the trees help to rid from carbon dioxide, but they also absorb water. We experienced the flooding that came from losing those trees, which were the means by which the water was able to be absorbed and taken out. The proposed plant will be located at the site of an AEG facility that's currently being used as a sawmill. If approved, the new plant will produce a novel kind of wood pellet they refer to as coal switch. AEG says these pellets are more efficient than the industry standard pellets and that they'll release less carbon into the air. Jeff Curry, a local riverkeeper and also a member of the Lumbee tribe, has been monitoring the site and its surrounding water for activity and signs of pollution. Do you have any concerns when it comes to this wood pellet plant and its impact on the waterways? I have huge concerns. And the reasons are many, but primarily to start is because it's experimental. This is a floodplain. This is an area that floods heavily. This plant's gonna flood like it has before. And that impacts this waterway, that impacts the communities around us. On December 10th, the Riverkeeper organization that Curry works for notified AEG of its intent to sue the company over illegally discharging pollution into the nearby river before its wood pellet operations have even begun. I always say that my job is about water quality, but it's also about people. Yeah. Um, if the water's not healthy, people aren't healthy. What happens if the process here is, is more intense and there's more pollutants that are coming off and they don't have the capacity to handle it? You're just straight up suspicious. I have to be because we've got enough pollution as it is. AEG declined our request for comment. Meanwhile, the communities that are already home to wood pellet plants are contending with the environmental impacts they're forced to live with. What do you think your community would be like? What do you think your life would be like if this town wasn't a dumping ground for industries like this? Wow, You're, the less noise, the pollution wouldn't be here. Um, we, the people would be able to cook out. It would be what I call peaceful living. And I know that, you know, we have to have industry, don't get me wrong, but we need something that's clean, something that's not gonna harm the community. 